Four weeks ago, Father Pat and I were in Scotland on vacation. The reason for our trip to Scotland was to celebrate the birthday of a dear friend, Jimmy McMillan. Now, Jimmy McMillan is actually Sir James McMillan, the preeminent composer in Great Britain today. And in his honor, there was a wonderful two-week festival celebrating his 60th birthday. I just want to tell you a little bit something about the name Jimmy. Jimmy in Glasgow, which is where uh, James is from, is like Bud here or Buddy here. Any man could be Buddy. And Jimmy grew up in the coastal town of Ayrshire on the west coast of Scotland. And he said he remembers the first time his father, who shared his name, he shared his name, uh, took him to Glasgow. He was surprised that everybody knew his father because everybody was calling him Jimmy. Well, anyway, Jimmy is uh, what he goes by. So some of Jimmy's most famous com compositions were performed at this festival, and it ended with the world premiere of his new fifth symphony, a choral symphony dedicated to the Holy Spirit. Now, Jimmy is a very devout Catholic, and in his program notes for the symphony, he acknowledged that although there is some music throughout history devoted to the Holy Spirit, this topic, quote, still feels like unexplored territory. Jimmy subtitled his symphony with the French term, Le Grand Inconnu, the Great Unknown, saying this, it is a French term used to describe the mystery of the Holy Spirit, which I cannot find replicated in the English spiritual tradition, the great unknown, le grand inconnu. What an interesting concept, calling the Holy Spirit the great unknown, an interesting and even contradictory concept. We expect the Holy Spirit, being the fullness of the wisdom of God, that the Holy Spirit will provide us with all the answers we need. Doesn't Jesus say at the end of the gospel passage we just heard, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, teach you everything. So why should we call the Holy Spirit the great unknown? Our scriptures today indicate that all we hope to know cannot be attained simply through logic, through analysis, through computation. Knowledge is not simply the assimilation of facts. Wisdom is not the accumulation of data. The Hebrew prophet Joel rhapsodized that when God pours his spirit upon our flesh, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. And St. Paul, writing to the Romans, says that all creation, even we, are groaning in expectation of something that is to come. There's a sense of being, of being called forth, being drawn to something more, something that is just beyond the horizon. And the word horizon is so appropriate. The late, brilliant Canadian Jesuit theologian Bernard Lonergan posited that every human person has within him or herself an unrestricted desire to know. We all have a questioning mind, a questioning heart. Now, every question brings us to a provisional answer which takes us to a new horizon, and from that horizon we can see the next question. The recently deceased Holocaust survivor and author Eli Wiesel put it this way, every ultimate question possesses a power that does not lie in the answer. Beginning a new academic year now with the Mass of the Holy Spirit gives us an invitation to explore this great mystery of the unknown. Whether we see this as an intellectual pursuit or a pursuit of the heart, it is an invitation to the human spirit to a greater depth an extended fullness, a wider vision. Our patron, soon to be saint next month, Cardinal John Newman, saw no contradiction between the work of the mind and the work of the soul. Each seeks to delve more deeply into the mystery, which is the sum of all mysteries. Whether we pursue truth, wisdom, goodness, beauty, joy, or peace, they are all facets of what the believer understands to be the mystery of God. No one area of study, of inquiry, can exhaust the reality of this mystery, and no one person can comprehend the entirety of this mystery, for it is our common and our universal mission to desire to explore. Beauty, truth, love, joy, peace, which we labor to create, to experience, and to share, in small and provisional ways, sometimes in our isolated silos, and sometimes in our collaborative pursuits, our mysteries of this mystery beyond all mysteries. And so we begin another academic year. The invitation is extended to us and to all, whether freshman, graduate student, alumnus, full professor, 
administrator or pending emer emeritus. Whether part of the university community or part of the community of the church or part of the larger human community, we are all called to embrace the questions, to absorb the questions, or perhaps better, to allow the questions to embrace and to absorb us. If we do, then perhaps the promise of the German poet Rilke will come to pass. He says, learn to love the questions, live the questions now, and perhaps then someday far in the future, you will gradually, without noticing it, live your way into the answer.